Hello there everyone, and welcome back to Void War Studios, where today we are looking back into the Tau, and into a particular auxiliary force that assists the Tau in battle, known as the Vespid Stingwingers. Typically deployed alongside the Tau and their crew allies, the Stingwingers flying flanking units that the Tau use to essentially harass and annoy enemy units. So of course, as this is about the Vespid Stingwingers, we are going to talk about their history, how they interact with the Tau, the Imperium, and just what they're doing at this point in time. And finally, what they're like on the tabletop. So, Stingwingers. Initially from a storm-racked planet known as Vespid, these lighter-than-air rock-like insects are capable of flight without the aid of any kind of technology. And upon first contact, when the Tau were beginning their sphere expansions, the Stingwingers were surprisingly willing to join the Tau on their quest for the greater good. And this is primarily because they had an unusual respect for the Tau Fire Warriors and the code that they honour and keep. The main characteristics of the Stingwingers is mainly that their racial characteristics, their ability to fly, having hard Chittite-like armour, makes them fairly tough without the aid of technology. Their weapons nowadays are designed by the Tau Earthcast and are capable of emitting short-range but very deadly bursts of radiation that allow them to reduce anything biological to a, well, small crispy cinder. And of course, as is quite clearly obvious, the Vespid can fly, and it makes them one of the few sentient creatures that don't require any technology in order to do so. In fact, they're so manoeuvrable with their wings that they don't even need jetpacks or anything to help them fly much faster. They are surprisingly capable without these types of equipment. And these two features combine to allow them to use the tactic they call sting wings, which means that they use their ability to reverse difficult terrain and the speed of their flight to harass and generally be a thorn in anyone's side when it comes to their supply lines, flanking maneuvers, catching people by surprise in ambushes. Yeah, it's, it's a pretty unpleasant uh, encounter with these things, as they are very fast-moving aliens, and, well, being killed by radiation guns is not that all that pleasant. They are, however, a reserve force for the card rays, typically used fairly sparingly, but always as a supportive role to their main fire warriors or crisis teams. In fact, the fire cast hold the Vespid Stingwingers in quite high regard, as they're able to react to threats astonishingly quickly and keep their crisis suits relatively safe from harm. And the Imperium of Man have had more than enough occasions to find out these Vespid are very unpleasant opponents at the best of times, and their ability to appear and disappear relatively quickly has created a number of uh, frightening and really unpleasant scenarios for the poor guardsmen who are most often getting attacked by these things. In fact, the fear was so real that at one point there were rumours going around that Vespid ate the fallen enemies. This has been proven to be incorrect, as it was the Crute who tend to eat the dead. However, that is still not helpful when the creature has quite sharp claws, and uh, for the poor guardsmen it's more than enough to serrate and... Uh, cut them to ribbons. In fact, the nickname Stingwinger is actually an Imperial Guard invention. The Tau themselves just call them, well, Vespid. So let's have a quick look at the equipment they're sporting, shall we? Vespid do wear a relatively lightweight armour known as Mesopolarium armour, which covers vital organs and any frontal parts of the creature's limbs, making it pretty much equal to Tau Fire Warrior armour and it's something that the Tau can make in pretty large quantities. To cap this off, they have a lovely little antenna that helps the insects smell their way around, meaning that they don't even need to see you in order to find you. The communion helm, which is worn by the senior Stingwing officer, or strain leader as they are called, allows them to communicate with the Tau commanders, and therefore be better equipped at being able to jump in at the worst possible time for the enemy, and the best possible time for the Tau. Adult Stingwingers have three sets of eyes, the uppermost able to detect ultraviolet light, the middle the spectrum of visible light, and the lowest set infrared, meaning they have a fantastic spectrum of vision, and their claws are hard enough to actually 
pierced diamond being used primarily to dig their tunnels on their stormy world. Stingwingers are an interesting Xenos creature, especially with the link going back towards the crystal weapons that they use. The Neutron Blaster being the primary one, as the unstable crystal harvested within essentially forms the ammunition, much like the Eldar. However, the Tau have converted these to essentially emit high doses of radiation, and only the Vespid are given these weapons because they emit a vibration which is potentially harmful unless you have the tough Chittite-like armor plate that the Vespid are come with naturally. Now on the tabletop, the Vespid function very much like a typical jump or fast attack unit. They have a movement of 14 inches thanks to having the jump pack keyword, they can fly, and with a ballistic and weapon skill of 4, it's nothing to get too excited about, but it's decent enough to deal with most things. And of course, they can benefit through marker lights from your Tau Fire Warriors, and this gives them obvious boosts. They have a decent strength, but with a 4 plus armor save, they are kind of vulnerable to enemy shooting. I have to be honest, I've not actually seen a Tau army fielding Vespid. I'm going to presume that most of the time that's because most people go into the Tau for the Fire Warriors and the Crisis Suits, and there isn't any points left for the poor Vespid. But because Vespid can deep strike, which is very handy, and their weaponry is nothing to be sniffed at, well, I would like to see some more Vespid on the tabletop, but to be fair, I'd also like to see more alien races that have allied themselves to the Tau. Make a nice uh, mix of units all over the place. But really, the best thing to use these fellas for is to jump in from the sides, shoot a lot, jump out of range, keep shooting, and, well, be a pest. I mean, the, they're called Stingwingers, after all. They are meant to be a pest. And with the Neutron Blaster having a Strength 5 AP2 Assault 2, they can keep shooting all day, and, well, that's not half bad. Especially with that minus 2 to AP, which, even for a Space Marine, is going to be irritating and more likely to kill them. It's also arguably one of the strongest weapons, considering that they're relatively cheap, less than 15 points per model, and you can have them in up to units of 12. So yeah, deep striking these guys behind a unit of Space Marines is going to cause all kinds of unpleasantness. And hitting on fours in close combat isn't bad, but I would recommend not doing it on a regular basis, just because, well... That 4 plus save. That 4 plus save is going to get you in all kinds of trouble. And right now, this is really all we know about the Vespid. They're a very unsung about little race in the Tau Empire. And frankly, I think that's a shame. It'd be really interesting to get some more information on them, as well as some campaigns where perhaps they feature more heavily. Then again, I'd also like to just see more races that are featured in the Tau Empire. At this point, I'd even be willing to... Let squats be a part of the Tau, if it meant that they would come back in some kind of significant form. So that is our video for today for 40k. I hope you've enjoyed it. Please put a like and subscribe down below. Share it with your friends. Let me know if there's anything you'd particularly like to see. Until next time, take care everyone.